Okay, let's do some mathy math. It says here, the data set below represents how many tacos the students in Inigo's kindergarten class can eat. Uh, so to be clear, each number represents uh, how many tacos one student can eat. So this student eats six, this student eats one, and so on and so forth. And you see here we have two variables, and ultimately our goal will be to solve for those two variables. And it says, please note, A is less than B, um, and B will be greater than 8. Okie dokie. Uh, when we do these, in general, the first thing you want to do is rewrite these numbers all in order. It really will just benefit you for a couple of questions in general. So here we go. It says, if the mode is not 6, what is the value of A? Okay. Well, like I said, let's put them in order. So my first number I write is 1. I usually put a dot underneath them just so I remember that I used them. And I have another one right here. Let's see, 1, we got 6 and 6. Okie dokie. Okay, one, one, a six, a six. What's next? Eight. And then a nine. And then ten. And then we have an A and we have a B. That's what we know. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I just always do this again to make sure I didn't forget something. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I have them all lined up. So the mode is whatever, which, whichever uh, data point comes up the most. Mode, most, mode, most. Okay, so looking here, right now, uh, mode is tied. Our mode right now, as it stands, is one and six. But the question says, hey, you know what? The mode is not six. So that means A would be the value that, that puts one over the edge. Well, if it's not six, then it has to be one. But for it to be 1, the number of 1s we have must be bigger than 2, because otherwise it would be tied. So that's how we know that A must be 1. So I'm actually going to scribble this guy out, and I'm going to write a 1. And now you can see we have 1, 2, 3 1s, and now that is the mode because it comes up the most. And I can also just write my answer, A is 1. There we go, just in case. Okay, so here is my new list. All, right, all nine terms all lined up nicely. Okay, and next it says, well, what is the median of the data set? Well, we can just use this list up here to find the, the mean, um, excuse me, the median of the data set because the median is just the number that is in the middle. So we know we have nine terms. So there's going to be four on one side and four on the other. So watch this. One, two, three, four. So like this is the first four. And then one, two, three, four. Ignore the scribbled out A, that's gone now, that's the 1 now. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 10, and B. And the number left in the middle, that is our median. So what is the median of the data set? Well, that is 6. And this note here just reminded you, make sure you substitute in the value you found for A. That's why I put the 1 there. Okay, let's keep it going. Uh, it says next, if the mean of the data set is 10, what is the value of B? Okay, so when we look at this, we, we got to first think to ourselves, well, what does it mean for something to be the mean? All right, so the mean is if you add up the entire data set, divide by the number of terms, in this case, that'd be 9, and then that, that would all equal Ten. So first we need to add up everything in our data set. So 1 plus 1 plus 1, that's 3. 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 plus 6 is 15. 15 plus 8 is 23. 23 plus 9 is 32. And 32 plus 10 is 42. And then plus B. And remember, we can't add the B in directly because they are unlike terms. So that's the top part. That's everything added together. We divide that by the number of terms. There are nine terms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it tells us your answer will be 10. Okay, that is the setup. Building this equation is step one. And it's maybe the most important step because if you can't build this, it's pretty hard to solve. Okay, the next step is just algebraic in nature. We just multiply both sides by nine to get rid of this denominator of 9, so if I multiply both sides by 9, those 9s cancel. I guess I can just do it. Just multiply both sides by 9, so those 9s cancel. 
And then you get 42 plus b equals what 10 times 9 is 90. And then we just subtract 42 from both sides. So 90 minus 42 is 48. So you have b is 48. And this is why it's important to keep your question in context. Because there is a little kid in kindergarten class who can eat 48 tacos. That's amazing. So what does the value of b tell you? Okay, in the context of the data set in mathematics, that tells us that 48 is an outlier. <laughs> uh, or B was an outlier. Uh, it also tells you that there is potentially a very large child in a kindergarten class who can eat 48 tacos. So what else does that tell you? Uh, it tells you to go buy more tacos or maybe take a kid to the doctor. Okay, either way, that is how you uh, use mean, medium mode to solve for variables. As always, please subscribe below if you want to be notified when I make you more marvelous practice problems. And if you have any questions or there's something you want to see or you just want to tell me how much uh, you love my videos, that's great. Just comment below and I'll do my best um, to reply or make you the problems you need so that you can succeed. Okay, thank you. Bye.